What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and if there's one thing I've kind of noticed with our Rating Your Setups video, is that I think a lot of you are underestimating the importance of monitors. So today we're gonna to talk about some of the monitor tech. Uh, I know we've done this video in the past, we're gonna talk about things like refresh rate, response time, screen size, like format, like the display format, the width, height, all that stuff. Because some of you, I think, might need to actually upgrade your monitors before you concern yourself with a new GPU. NZXT's build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer, and right now they are proud to announce expansion and availability to Australia, the Netherlands, France, and Italy. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. And all builds are backed by the BLD Peace of Mind warranty. To get started building your next gaming PC, visit the BLD link in the description below. All right, so the aim of today's video is gonna to be to educate you guys on some of the different settings within monitors so that when you're going out there shopping, uh, trying to upgrade your setups, specifically your monitor, then you'll kind of know what you're looking for. That way you don't accidentally maybe get something you didn't understand and then it's not gonna be exactly what you wanted. They have to deal with like boxing it up or returning it to Amazon or whatever else. So also too, I will put in each one of these categories down below in the description, a link to a monitor that I recommend that's both cost effective and obviously effective at getting the results for that particular monitor type. Because there's a lot of different monitors out there, whether it be 16 by nine, 16 by 10, 21 by nine, 21 by, uh, I think there's an even wider one. I forget if it's like 40 by one now or something crazy like the Samsung units. So let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so the first thing we'll get out of the way is how panels are measured. You're always gonna see 24 inch, 27 inch, 32, 34, 38, or whatever. The measurement is always taken diagonally from corner to corner. So this corner down to that corner. And what that's basically telling you is that dimension. Now, a lot of people think that a 27 inch means that's the actual horizontal width of the monitor. And that's not true. Those measurements are always gonna be a little bit different. The reason why I mention this is make sure when you're looking at a monitor, you look at the overall dimensions if you're worried about whether or not it's gonna fit or clear a shelf or the width that you have it or something like that. Some brands also measure the viewable, which is the panel itself, corner to corner. Some will measure the actual outer side of the bezel from corner to corner, making your screen real estate actually slightly smaller than advertised. Now, in the measurements, when you look at the specs of the monitor, it will usually say viewable. So you wanna make sure that that says viewable if you wanna know exactly what size you're getting. Obviously, if it's a big, thick, bezeled monitor and it says 27 inch you know, overall dimension, then you know that the viewable is gonna be much smaller than that. But one common myth out there is that somehow the size of the panel itself determines the pixels. Well, the only thing that determines what the pixel is the size of the pixel. Because let's say, for instance, you have a 27 inch panel like we have here with this ViewSonic. If you're curious, this is a ViewSonic Elite. It's a 1440p, so it's the WQHD, or QHD, WQHD is the ultra wide, but so it's a QHD, 165 hertz refresh rate, G-Sync, uh, IPS, all those things. We'll tell you what all that means in a second so that you can know what all of those are when you're shopping. But this 27 inch panel and a 24 inch panel, if they're 1440p or 1080p, have the exact amount of pixels. They're this, exactly the same because the size of the panel does not denote the resolution, the resolution rating does. So what you might notice is if you have a 27 inch 1080p panel, and a 24 inch 1080p panel, the 24 inch might actually look nicer to you because you're gonna notice what's called a screen door effect with the larger the panel gets because the pixels themselves get bigger. The bigger the pixels, which are squares by the way, uh, are gonna be more noticeable. So that's why when you size up above, in my opinion, 24 inch panel, you should look at 1440p or QHD or potentially even 4K depending on what you use for the panel is. So, don't get that mixed up. Don't think the size of the panel has anything to do with the resolution because it doesn't. Now, speaking of resolution, let's go ahead and uh, kind of decode that for you. Let's start with 1920 by 1080. That is a resolution by resolution number. So what that means is 1920 is the amount of pixels going horizontal across the panel. 1080 or 1080 pixels is the height. Now, those are usually determined in a pixel ratio or a screen ratio, like for instance, 16 by nine. 1920 by 1080 is a 16 by nine, which means if this is 16, that is nine. Simple way of putting it, it's basically a ratio. If you wanna know how many pixels are in that panel, you can just take the two numbers and times them by each other because it's horizontal versus vertical. Now, what you'll notice is that sometimes you'll see an odd number there. You'll see like a 1920 by 1200. What that basically means is it's still the width of a 1920 panel, but it's not 1080p, it's 1200p, which means 
1200 pixels high. So you have a little bit of extra pixel real estate in the height. That's referred to as a 16 by 10 panel because it's slightly taller than a standard 16 by nine, it's a 16 by 10. Now the same can be said for something like an ultra wide or 21 by nine. That just means that if the ratio is 21 wide, it's nine high, that's referred to as an ultra wide. And in those resolutions, they'll usually be referred to as a W before the resolution. So if we go ahead and move this guy out of here and we bring my ultra wide in here, we'll decode that. So this is an ultra wide panel. What you're gonna find here is these are 21 by nine resolutions. So we already explained what 16 by nine is, 16 by 10 is, this is 21 by nine. And now you're getting even wider resolutions or wider formats than this because of the fact that now you're seeing companies basically take two of these and putting them side by side or two 16 by nine panels in a single layout. So what you're gonna notice is that the resolutions on this are gonna seem a little bit odd. This is a 3440, which means 3,440 pixels across by 1,440 pixels high. So usually what you'll see is the second number referred to as the P because that's, uh, you, the P basically meant progressive and uh, it's not really relevant these days, but they'll almost always make reference to the resolution in that vertical height because those ratios are something that you kind of see. Now, what we're starting to see now, just like I showed you with the 16 by nine and 16 by 10, or the 1920 by 1200, you're starting to see panels that are like 3440 by 1600, which is a panel that I actually have personally at home. That's starting to get really close to the amount of pixels that you'll find in a 4K panel. It's more than three quarters of those pixels. So as you add pixels to your monitor, you're gonna add more stress to your graphics card because it has to write data for every single one of those pixels and what to do. So the higher the resolution, the higher the stress is going to be on your graphics card. Now let's go ahead and talk about the uh, refresh rate. That's the other number that people get really hyper fixated on, but it's only half of the formula in terms of what makes a good panel. The refresh rate means the electronics and the logic board in the monitor is able to take data from the graphics card at that many times per second, referred to as a Hertz rate. By standard, 60 Hertz is something that for the longest time people really aspired for. Let's just get 60 Hertz gaming or 60 FPS. You'll refer to the frame rate from the graphics card as frames per second. The monitor will always refer to it as a Hertz rating. It's just like electricity. It's got a polling rate, but they're usually referred to as a Hertz rate. That just means that the logic of the panel itself is capable of creating or refreshing the information that many times per second. So this panel is capable of 144 Hertz or 144 refreshes per second. Now you'll also hear panels talk about overclocking or referred to as overdriving. They're referred to as overdriving with a monitor. It's technically the same as overclocking where sometimes they can go higher than that, 144 to 165 or maybe even 175. But you're gonna find that sometimes what'll happen when you start overdriving a panel is you'll start to see some sort of banding or color separation or maybe ghosting. I personally never overclock or overdrive the panels. I leave them at their native uh, refresh rates to make sure I never have any weird wonkiness happening. But the other half of the formula here that corresponds with refresh rate is response time. If your panel can refresh itself, the logic inside, because there is a logic board in every single panel that's taking the information from the graphics card and turning it into an image, if that can refresh 144 times per second, your pixels are the other half of that formula. So that's referred to as a response time or the time it takes for a pixel to go from off to on to off again. You'll often refer to that or hear that referred to as gray to gray. There is also black to black, which is actually admittedly slower than gray to gray because when you have a backlight on or backlighting that's making the pixels light up, remember the pixels are just gates that create color with either R, G or B and then any ratio of those creating uh, all the 18 point whatever million colors. The pixel has to be able to respond fast enough so that by the time the monitor is drawing the next image, you don't still have residual light from the previous image. That's referred to as ghosting. Now as a demonstration we could put up on the screen right here, and there's actually a website you guys can go to, we'll link it down below as well, hopefully I don't crash the site, where it will have a UFO test and it will have a UFO that goes across the screen. It's gonna, it's gonna basically know what your refresh rate is because your operating system reports what the refresh rate and current desktop settings are. And you'll be able to see in real time what those ghost images look like. That's basically where by the time the next image is drawn, the previous one is still fading out. The faster the pixel response, the smoother and less ghosting there's going to be. Oftentimes what happens with overdriving as well, and one of the reasons why I don't like overdriving or overclocking a monitor, is it also gets a little bit predictive where it starts to draw the next frame early so that it can be ahead 
to be able to, that's why it's called overdriving, to be able to be ahead on that image. But oftentimes what you start to get is a ghosting effect in front of the image. And then it starts to look all kinds of wonky. So that's one of the reasons why I don't really do overdriving, even though many panels do allow for it. So you can have a fast refresh rate, the rate at which the panel can redraw the image. But if you have slow pixel response time, and you'll see oftentimes one millisecond response time, there's a lot of debate on how accurate those numbers actually are. Oftentimes you'll find it's really more like three or four milliseconds. Anything five milliseconds or less is considered pretty much esports. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the debate about whether or not those are false numbers, but I'm gonna tell you right now, if they're advertised at one millisecond, they're gonna be extremely smooth versus something that's like 20 milliseconds or 25 milliseconds. A perfect example right now, pause this video and move your cursor around real quick. You're gonna see more than one cursor as you're doing it. That is specifically refresh rate and response time. Your cursor is moving faster than the response time and the refresh rate of your panel, which is gonna make you see more than one cursor. Now, how fast your panel is, is gonna determine how close that trail is to the cursor itself. So even with a really fast monitor, you're still gonna see a little bit of a, what looks like a comet trail behind it, but it's gonna be more of them, and they're gonna be much closer to the cursor itself. So when it comes to gaming, the two things that reign supreme is refresh rate and response time. In my opinion, even over resolution. Because having 4K, but having it be a smudgy, ghosty mess is not a good gaming experience. And anyone out there that's running a panel that maybe was inexpensive and cheap probably knows it's exactly what I'm talking about. So let's go and talk about the other major technology you're gonna find in panels. And that is obviously the type of screen that it is. So we're talking IPS panels, TN panels, VA panels, which are the three major types. It's becoming a little less relevant to talk about today versus where we were a few years ago, but I'm even mentioning it because of the fact that obviously it's one of the other major um, specs of a panel. But I'm seeing a lot of, when we do these setup videos, I'm seeing a lot of people still running mismatch panels and really old TN panels. TN was the first high refresh rate, low response time or fast response time um, panels. They were able to give you extremely fast motion, but they're almost always foil backlit. The type of panel that they are gives you terrible off viewing uh, angles, which means if you're not looking straight on, if you look off to the side, there's major color shift and dulling across the screen. TN panels, unfortunately though, have the worst color recreation of any panel type out there. Now that may not matter to a lot of people, but as technologies have improved, the cost of that comes down as well. So now we're seeing, and for the longest time, there's actually a limitation where IPS, which is the most accurate color and has the best off viewing angles with up to 170 degrees viewing angle, which means there won't be any color shift or dulling uh, when it comes to IPS, at least to nearly 180 degree viewing angle, makes them obviously the better choice because the costs are continuing to come down. But they were, they were limited to 60 FPS or 60 Hertz. And for the longest time, they were somewhere around 10 to 15 milliseconds response time, which made them great panels for editing, photo editing, video editing, or content consumption like Netflix and stuff like that. It's one of those things where it wasn't great for gaming for a long time. And that's really changed because now you can get IPS, high refresh rate, low response time gaming panels for in the $250 range, which in the past, that panel, that exact panel, if we went back say six or seven years ago, would have cost $1,000 or more. And you're seeing it in larger formats now, not just 24 inch, 27 inch. Um, in fact, that ultra wide we showed you, which is a 34 inch is also an IPS panel. But what we have right here is a Nixia TN panel. And the problem with TN, like I already said, is as you look at it from different off viewing axis, uh, it's gonna really start to have major color shift and a kind of a rainbowing effect because that's the way that the foil of the backside of the TN works. In my opinion, TN panels, once you see, no pun intended, once you see the light, IPS, or even VA for that matter, which is kind of a good middle ground, TN just really starts to look nasty. Now TN usually would have the most vibrant, oversaturated, unrealistic colors, which for many people, they like that. They wanna turn on the computer and it's just, a, it looks like a circus. It's a big, bright, blotchy mess. And most of the time, games didn't care. But now that games with their newer engines like look a lot more realistic and developers and studios are putting a lot of time and effort into color grading the game and having a certain cinematic effect, you're doing yourself a real disservice. Not to mention with the TN back, back light and the way it works itself, whether it be LED or LCD, which is still, again, an, usually an edge lit or full back lit, shining through a foil and then through the pixel gate, it's gonna make dark scenes even harder to see. 
because IPS does even better at low light recreation than TN. So if you're dealing with like a spooky game or something in a cave or like, you know, Rise of the Tomb Raider or something like that, or Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a lot of dark scenes, you're gonna see it better with something like an IPS panel. And because it's become so much more cost effective, if you're shopping for a panel, there's no reason not to consider one. Now let's talk about TN viewing angles for a second. Yes, the off viewing angles really do suck and you notice they start to shift, but one of the things they do with TN panels is they orient the, the panel in a way to give you the best viewing angles left to right. You might notice if you just go a few inches up or down, it has a major shift on that horizontal axis, which means if you're gonna try and turn it vertical to make it some sort of like a form reading monitor, it's gonna be even worse because you've just put it 90 degrees offset from the way it's intended to be viewed. Let's talk about FreeSync and G-Sync. FreeSync, you're gonna find in just about every panel nowadays, that's not G-Sync. And the reason for that is it doesn't require a hardware module built in and it's open source, it's open, open where it's free. That's why it's called FreeSync. In the beginning, FreeSync was absolutely positively not supported by NVIDIA, period, end of story. But now that NVIDIA has gone and started validating FreeSync panels that work with their G-Sync technology, it's been a long time since I've had a FreeSync panel not have the G-Sync option inside the NVIDIA control panel. So one thing to mention regarding V-Sync though, because I know some of you are gonna be like, well, I'll just turn on V-Sync. I don't need a sync technology built into the monitor. The problem with that is if you have a 144 Hertz panel and you turn on V-Sync and your game can't draw a consistent 144 Hertz or higher FPS, if you drop below 144, it's gonna go automatically to a half rate, which means it'll drop wait for that next frame, which is actually gonna be 72 Hertz. The same thing for a 60 FPS panel. If you've got an old system and you have it locked at 60 Hertz V-Sync and it drops below 60, it's gonna drop down to 30. And it will continue to half rate itself as long as it stays above that, or if it can't stay at the V-Sync number. So you might wanna consider enabling something like Adaptive Sync, which is more uh, adaptive, if you will, to keep the frame rates in sync and you won't notice nearly as many of those stutters or those jolty pauses, if you will. It's the changes that you're noticing when it's fast and slow and fast and slow. If you can smooth that out, you have a harder time determining that there's frame drops or frame rate dips. So that's why a sync technology is nice. Now that you don't have to necessarily have an expensive NVIDIA G-Sync you know, certified panel with the G-Sync module built into it because it's a hardware interface, FreeSync is definitely something to consider and a way to go. And most LG panels now that are not G-Sync are also FreeSync, and you're seeing that with ASUS panels. Uh, it's nice to see that sync technology pretty much in all of them. The other thing you might consider is, you know, nice to have. Is, is it an adjustable height base? This one's got a little locking button. You know, does it, uh, and this one doesn't actually rotate, but does it rotate into a vertical? I see a lot of vertical mounts on uh, our, our series where we react to your setups because people might want to use them just for forums. Or maybe you're a Reddit junkie and you're constantly at Reddit and you like having that vertical height to see the threads rather than having to scroll and having all that extra width for no reason whatsoever. Does it have fold out little headphone jacks or USB hub built in? Does it have a headphone holder? Does it have RGB lighting? All that sort of stuff are nice to have, but in my opinion, I would take obviously the panel tech, the IPS, high refresh rate, fast response time over any of those features. So like I said, I hope that's helped you guys understand some of the panel tech and what it is that you guys are shopping for. I'll put links to my favorite monitors down below that are kind of like different price points as well as different techs, whether it be resolutions or IPS, ultra wides or whatever. So you guys can get an idea of what I would recommend if you guys are shopping for new panels. I know I've done this video in the past, but I still get lots of questions and I'm still seeing a lot of people running uh, interesting setups on our, on our Setup React series. So thanks for watching guys. Don't forget about our giveaway. Uh, you can find a link to it down in the description below. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you don't wanna miss out on that one. So thanks for watching. What is your favorite panel? What are you running? And what do you love and or hate about it? Comment down below and we'll see you in the next one.